given a great display, the obvious next requirement is graphics to drive that display. And that's not a trivial undertaking when it involves 16 megapixels per eye, more than an order of magnitude more than today at 90 hertz. As it happens, most of those pixels are wasted at any given time because the eye has only a very small area of full resolution. This area, called the fovea, is a mere three degrees across, the size of your thumb at arm's length, and resolution falls off rapidly away from the fovea. The obvious solution is to render pixels with variable density across the scene to match the eye's resolution. This is called foveated rendering, and it can potentially reduce the number of pixels rendered by an order of magnitude or even more. I'm sure all of you can appreciate how much easier it would be to hold frame rate if you only had to render one-tenth the pixels. Foveated rendering has a critical dependency, however. It can only become a core technology if eye tracking is completely reliable across the full range of eye motion for the entire user population. Because if it fails, visual quality will deteriorate drastically. You might think, how hard can it be to track a single convex organ in a confined space? And indeed, when we started Oculus Research, I assumed eye tracking just required some solid engineering. Two years later, I think that's true for tracking well enough to give avatars eyes. But it turns out the tracking at the level required for foveated rendering is not a solved problem at all. One reason is that pupil tracking is a key eye tracking technique like so. Here you can see the pupils are being tracked correctly. But pupils vary wildly, including this and this. And of course, pupils also change size and can even change shape. And here you can see they're not even the same size. Glint tracking off the cornea can help. But then there's the problem of eyelids. Not to mention fitting enough illuminators and cameras into a compact headset and positioning them so that tracking works across the full range of eye motion with deep eye sockets, flat faces, bulging eyes, and LASIK and is 100% reliable in all those cases. Worse, the eye is not nearly as rigid as you think. The motion at the end is a little subtle, so let's look at it again. Watch the shape of the pupil as the eye stops. This is a problem because what we really want to know is where the image is on the retina. Tracking the outside of the eye can only give us an approximation of that. Ideally, we track the retina itself, but doing that in a headset across the full range of eye motion would require inventing a whole new type of eye tracking technology.